I put a couple of threads out on Twitter recently. Um, mm-hmm. One this week uh, with regards to digital dollars. Yeah. So, as a Bitcoin, a lot of Bitcoin, CBDCs or stable coins. Stable coins. Stable coins. Not the algos, uh, but whatever. Forget about them. A lot of people uh, who are Bitcoiners rightly don't like shit coins. Yeah, of course. Some people are like, I don't care because anyone can create money as long as you you have a free choice to use it. But whatever, they can be critical Mm -hmm. of shit coins. But we have got to this place whereby there is a real need for digital dollars in the world. Things like Tether have become very important to people in Argentina, Venezuela, Turkey, whatever. They At the moment, they perform best on uh, some of these shit coin platforms. How do we square that circle as pro-freedom, pro-human uh, people who want the best, for, you know, we want people in uh, dire economic situations to have the best access to money as possible, knowing full well that Bitcoin is not the right tool day-to-day for some people just because of the volatility. So there is an there is an actual reason to be pro-stable coins. So how do we square that circle with these platforms? Because I've been, it's been challenging me. And I've seen mm. some people go back and go, no, they're, they're shit coins, forget them. You're promoting shit coins. And I'm like, mm, I guess I am. But at the same time, it's only because I spoke to Gladstein. He's like, no, these digital dollars are super important in these jurisdictions. Yeah, like, yeah, in the how, third world, the yeah. developing world. How do we square that circle? Uh, so for me, it's like, I just don't care about stable coins. You know what I mean? I never have. You can't invest in stable coins, right? Like, um, I mean, I, you can. If you, if you own a shit currency, like, I don't know. Like the Argentinian peso, you can invest in stable sure, coins. You can store value in, yeah. in stable coins. Stable coins are number go down coins by default because they're trying to keep stable value with the US dollar, which is an inflating way of purchasing power. So yeah. they're not actually stable. They're number go down, right? Well, the, the, the number go down, uh, depending on where you are, uh, on a long term basis, always against Bitcoin. Yeah. But, but it on might a be, short term basis. It might be better than your local currency. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Or, and yeah, it might be better than your local currency. It might also be better than Bitcoin in certain time frames of bear markets. I also just think, I don't know why there's so much talk about stable coins to me because they just seem like a, a temporary stopgap measure in between here and a digital, fully digital dollar, like a CBDC. And so, you know, it's like basically. The algorithmic ones don't work, will never work, yeah. are stupid, are pointless. We obviously saw the the Luna collapse. And I mean, that was, I don't know why people were taken uh, by surprise because of it. I kept hearing this thing about like, it was a top 10 cryptocurrency. It was a blue chip cryptocurrency. First of all, there's no such thing as a blue chip <laughs> cryptocurrency. Like these don't um, have returns. I mean, like Terra Luna had a 20% return. And, you know, you have to realize that like rats die in the trap because they don't understand why the cheese is free. And you just became the fucking rat because you didn't understand why the cheese was free. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like that that concept is an outright scam. And I think anybody peddling those is a – they're either a moron or they're a liar. Uh, and in either case, it's not great. And then you have like the fully regulated like, you know, whatever the Jeremy Alaris of the world are doing. And I think, you know, there's some interesting stuff there. But they basically just are like big fintechs to me. And I just don't care about it. I think – if People in the third world, the developing world, want to like use stable coins uh, because it makes sense for them. Absolutely, like I, you know, who am I to tell them? These people who are living on three to five dollars a day, like who am I to tell them what to do with their their wealth? I'm nobody to tell them what to do with that, right? So it's like, um, I, it'd be nice if some of this was attached to Bitcoin, I suppose. But then again, it's like you don't really need it to be. I don't know. The whole phenomenon is kind of uh, pointless, in my opinion. But then again, I'm not in the developed world. So, well, when it's a CBDC, we don't know what controls will exist over who can access it, where they can access it. Mm-hmm. I think you get a little bit more freedom with Tether on Tron than you might get from a you know, Fed issued CBDC. You might say, "Well, you know what? We're not going to let those people in Egypt use it." Yeah. Well, ultimately, the the you know the the U.S. government is not going to allow um, people to algorithmically or, you know, whatever, back to the dollar without, you know, pretty hefty regulations. And so they're going to bring the entire stablecoin industry to heel and it'll be ultra regulated, et cetera, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, you just don't give a shit about that then. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, what do you, why do you care about it? Uh, because I make a show and I'm trying to understand the space. I'm trying to understand how people use currency in different locations. You know, yeah. I'm not making a show for people in America to buy Bitcoin 
and you know, hodl for four years and buy a car. I'm making it for anyone, anywhere who can benefit from it. But in doing that, you have to understand the money. And then mm. when you understand the money, you understand the tools that people use. Yeah. And one of the tools is these digital dollars. And I have seen some criticism of it. It's like, no, we should just be promoting Bitcoin to these people. And it's just like, well, hold on a second. This person might like live on $20 a week. Right. And their cost of living is more than that. They have no ability to save. They certainly don't want to put in something that might crash in a couple of days by 20%, which can happen, we know. So I think it's I think it's given sometimes bad advice. I think it's a world of basically for most people, there is a world of Bitcoin and dollars, which is good advice, and we should pair them together and tell mm-hmm. people what you know, give advice on what should be used for what. And we have to be empathetic to their local challenges, geographic, economic challenges. And it's not everyone should just buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin isn't going to solve short-term issues. I think Bitcoin at a nation level can solve long-term macro issues. Yeah. Okay. But it doesn't solve short-term micro issues for the individual if the timing is wrong. And I think there's mm. there's certainly risk to that. And I think that needs wrapping into the education. Yeah, well, certainly the, there's been, you know, Bitcoin has a long evolutionary arc and it's going through this sort of order of operations where it's store value first, medium of exchange, then eventually widespread unit of account. And that's like a 50 year process, right? So like yeah. in the interim, we're doing basically every bad idea um, at full tilt. And by when I say we, I mean a bunch of people with loose morals are doing it, you know, like the Do Kwans of the world. So like, I don't know if you're going to like go out there and like, you know, say, yes, everybody should be using stable coins, right? Like a lot of people looked at the Terra Luna thing and they were like, this is a top 10, you know, stable yeah. coin, whatever. And how can I lose? And they're giving me a great return and people don't understand they, you know what I mean? And so it's like, you've now given, okay. I've not told anyone by I don't think, I, no, no, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying you have, but like, I'm saying like, if that is the, if that is the case, then what happens when they get fully rug pulled? There's so much trust involved in a stable coin. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's no trust. Like the idea that we are, it's so archaic that we're like trusting humans to like set the monetary policy of anything. We have a programmatic monetary policy now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's like I feel like we have the fucking internal combustion engine, and I'm watching people try and pull cars with horses still, and and they think it's a great idea. They think they've made an innovation. You know what I mean? And this is what the shit corners will tell you. They'll be like, "What about innovation? You hate innovation?" No, it's like I love innovation. You're not open minded. I, yeah, they'll say you're not open minded. No, I I fucking love innovation. Okay, but most evolutionary progress is a bunch of maladaptations until you find a successful adaptation. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And then when you have the successful adaptation, it carries forward. That's the zero to one moment. Most of these shitcoin adaptations are, or innovations are one to N. They're just different shitty versions of things we already have that personally enrich the founders, right? So it's like, who who has all the Bitcoin from Terra Luna? Somebody has it. Well, you know they, what I mean? they, they, they sold didn't it. sell it. They did I sell don't it. believe that shit. No, I think you can track it. Can you? Yeah, I think it didn't it all go into Binance. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they sold it. If they if it went into Binance, that means CZ has it because he was a backer from fucking Terra Luna. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> somebody has it. That's the point. 80, was it eighty thousand? It swallowed. Yeah. Fucking. It didn't swallow it. It's in CZ's pocket. Well, <laughs> it it went back into the market. But yeah, I mean, look, I I, I barely paid attention to Terra Luna. It literally came on my radar when. Um, People said they're buying ten billion dollar Bitcoin. And the whole thing's out of shady. But I do yeah. think I do think I think you can grade them. I think Circle in some ways is probably the one you can trust the most. I think that's fully backed by uh US Treasuries, which isn't the perfect. Yeah. But at least it tracks. Yeah, um, they're gonna be hyper regulated. Yeah. Like that that's the path forward for them, especially after this terror collapse. It gives, you know, Treasury and you know, all the all the the fintech regulators like all the ammo they need to come after the stablecoin industry, you know. I think uh, it won't just be stable coins. Over, I think it's everything. Oh, they're stable. coming for us too. Mm. Yeah, they're coming for Bitcoin for sure. Not in the same way. They're coming for the cryptos. Yeah, I think for they're sure. coming for the cryptos. I think Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin and maybe ETH. What they're going to do to Bitcoin is, you know, they're going to they're going to hit us like there's going to, you know, there's an EPA sponsored attack that's imminent, right? Like, which was obvious the minute the EPA commission or the Biden admin commissioned the EPA to do a study. It's like. What do you think the EPA is going to find out? That what Bitcoin, is the EPA? Uh, the Environmental Protection oh. Agency, right? Yeah. What do you think the EPA is going to find out? You think they're going to find out that Bitcoin's fucking awesome, bro? You should fucking go all in? No, they're going to find out that Bitcoin is a waste. It uses too much energy. 
These people need carbon credits. They're terrible people. You know, some of them want to wear uh, bare fur coats. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and uh, they're all racist or something. You know what I mean? Like, that's going to be the narrative. Yeah, and this is why I'm, like, always fearful of Bitcoin only being picked up by the Republican side. I think it's mm. more, I think if anything, it's more important to be now pushing it to some uh, some people on the Democratic side. I listen. I would love to see Bitcoin be more bipartisan, but the truth is that it's not, and it hasn't been going that way. Um, the crypto, like the Ethereum side, tends to be heavily left, and the Bitcoin side tends to be heavily right. Like Bitcoin Twitter is like a right, more right leaning echo chamber. Um, you know, whereas Ethereum Twitter is like a more left leaning echo chamber, right? This so is like, fucking why Americans so annoying. You've just literally taken these two coins and pitched them against each other. I think that was Joe Lubin's like uh, chief marketing innovation with Ethereum was like, let's pitch this coin to leftist. You know what I mean? I mean, once they once they complete the merge, they're going to come full attack. You yeah. know that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Full attack. Yeah, and it's going to be painful and annoying. And POS difficult. is a you know, or all the proof of work stuff is a shitcoin sponsored attack on on bitcoin and that's obviously anybody who's paying attention and you know what i mean proof of stake is better for them it's better from an incentive perspective yeah it allows them to do some of the things they want to do that you know we don't like but they like and they have powerful interest behind them and they're well, trying to force a change in the code on us it's that was like, that was the ripple guy wasn't it yeah he changed the he code. sponsored the greenpeace attack and oh. it's like you can't just change Bitcoin's code. That's not how it works. There's, no, there's nobody we're going to call on the phone and be like, hey, man, <laughs> turns out Congress wants us to do proof of stake. That's never happening. You know, so what they'll do is it's they'll- It's never they'll, happening. They'll hit North American Bitcoin miners with, um, you know, taxes, regulations, um, all sorts of restrictions, carbon credits, et cetera. And the hash rate will move. Probably, yeah. Which is not long-term bad for Bitcoin, but it is long-term bad for North American Bitcoin mining. And I mean, America just keeps shooting itself in the foot over and over again. Like, uh, we can't stop ourselves from doing stupid things nowadays. You know what I mean? Mm. We're, we're Britain pre-World War One. you know? <laughs> Fuck off, man. <laughs>